Every single lethal aid package that has gone into Israel is in direct violation of America's own rules and restrictions that they've set forward that dictate. So there's a very famous story about young Joe Biden, Senator Joe Biden. This is a story. Biden sides with Satan. Biden sides with Satan. From the early 80s, apparently in June 1982, Joe Biden was on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. The dude's been in the Senate since Cato was in the Senate. And he was the prime minister of Israel at the time, Menachem Begin. At the time, Israel was going into Lebanon in order to attempt to extirpate terrorism that was coming from southern Lebanon. Again, nothing changes when it comes to the Middle East. And Joe Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Nothing changes when it comes to the Middle East because Israel is doing Israel shit back then as it's doing Israel shit right now. Whose fault is that, dumbass? Look, notice how he doesn't have to even make... Notice how he doesn't have to even give an argument as to why. This is, um, We're not going to watch all 53 minutes of this, okay? That's crazy. I'm just going to go through some of the parts and move on. He doesn't have to actually describe anything about like Israel invading Lebanon or anything like that because it's a given. Lebanon, Muslim, bad. Hezbollah, even though this predates it, doesn't matter. Even though this created Hezbollah, doesn't matter. Lebanon, Muslim, Israel, want it, Israel, take it. Joe Biden was very angry at Menachem Begin. He lectured Menachem Begin over Israeli settlements. And Menachem Begin, who his entire family was effectively murdered in the Holocaust, and then he ended up moving to Israel and becoming an Wait. underground fighter against the British in an attempt to establish the state of Israel. An underground fighter? Huh. What is a substitute for the term that Ben is refusing to use there, you guys think? Yeah, listen, you don't understand. Zionists can never be called terrorists. They are underground fighters. <laughs> yeah, tunnel boy. But this time, these are not terror tunnels, okay? Like, blowing up King David Hotel and killing not only British officers, but also, like, a shit ton of civilians there. I think it was, what, what 61 or 91 people? That was an act of, that was an act of peaceful terrorism. Remember. Because he agrees with it. And then he was out in the political wilderness for a long time, finally became prime minister of Israel. And this is a very famous, this is a very famous anecdote. Apparently, he then turned to Joe Biden and he said, don't threaten us with cutting off aid to give up our principles. That's not the story. The real story is Joe Biden telling uh, Begin that he should kill more children, basically. And Begin being like, that's too much. We don't do that. When they were doing that. That's the story, right? Isn't that the, isn't that the story that he's talking about? I don't think that he was actually criticizing Israel over settlements because settlements at that point were marginal, unlike the top of the hour ad break, which is significant, which happens at the top of every hour. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. What? Wait, did Israel actually make a terrorist that killed British officers, the prime minister? That's horrifying. Wait, what? I mean, I don't even necessarily disagree, to be fair, with what the early Zionist uh, terrorists did to the British. Um, that was relatively more reasonable for them to do so, because, like, 
they wanted unrestricted immigration into Palestine and the British in an effort to stop the the Arab revolts was like no I think the stuff that they did after to the Arab civilian population the Palestinians is like way grosser and and unimaginably cruel <clears throat> I was just bringing that up because, like, no matter what, in any other circumstance, if, like, a non-Western actor is, like, doing an act of terror against, you know, England, Ben would lose his mind. He'd be like, that's terrorism. What the fuck? But, yes, most Israeli prime ministers early on were terrorists. Most party leadership early on straight up were in terror cells Zionist terror cells anyway Ben would call that underground fighting cells here's the three minute ad break right now by the way said I'm not a Jew with trembling knees and then he continued, quote, I'm a proud Jew with 3,700 years of civilized history. Nobody came to our aid when we were dying in the gas chambers and ovens. Nobody came to our aid when we were striving to create our country. We paid for it. We fought for it. We died for it. We will stand by our principles. We will defend them. And when necessary, we will die for them again with or without your aid. Now, this story is not about Menachem Begin. This story is about Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a coward. Joe Biden is a terrible, terrible voice when it comes to foreign policy. And he always has been. There's a reason that former Obama Defense Secretary Robert Gates said that Joe Biden had literally never been correct on foreign policy in his entire life. I don't know why he says nobody came to our aid. Maybe maybe some of the Israelis in the chat can explain that position to me because, like, the Red Army did. Fuck it, even the Americans did. But certainly the Red Army did. They were the ones who uh, liberated most of the camps in Eastern Europe. fuck's that about is it because like it took too long is that what it is and like six million jews were slaughtered in the process and that is true Joe Biden has a unique capacity to screw up when it comes to foreign policy. Joe Biden is weak need. Joe Biden is so weak that he brags about being the only member of the Biden of the Obama administration to oppose the bin Laden raid. That's how weak Joe Biden is. Well, now Joe Biden is showing his neck to Hamas. And when you talk about unjustifiable acts on every possible level, moral, political, pragmatic, none of it makes any sense. On the moral level, Hamas is a terrorist. I hope he's going to talk about Israel's actions now, right? Like unjustifiable in every sense of the word. That is currently holding five Americans. There are five Americans who are being held in terror. Israel is a terrorist group currently holding um, approximately 10,000 Palestinians, which include uh, children as well and women. ...tunnels by Yahya Sinwar and his group of barbaric thugs. Their names. I know that Joe Biden doesn't mention their names very often. He will talk about Brittany Griner until the cows come home. But when it comes to five Americans who happen to be Jewish who are being held by Hamas in terror tunnel. It's so funny for Ben to say this because the only way to facilitate the, the release of those Americans is by ceasefire. And the only people currently on the planet that are standing against that is not even the American state. It's just Benjamin Netanyahu's war cabinet. Like... Tens of thousands of Jews in Israel do not agree with Ben, uh, do not agree with Benny Boy here. Obviously, the entire Western world doesn't agree with Benny Boy here at this point. Literally, he is just alone. And until recently, Joe Biden was on uh, Benny Boy's side, but that's, that was pretty much it. The idea that, like, um, there is some magical way of, like, releasing these hostages... And it's just Hamas that's like refusing to give them up is so stupid. Israel and the war cabinet specifically 
is the only reason why those hostages have not been released and will probably fucking die under Israeli rockets. Then he won't mention their names. He'll take the occasional photo op with their relatives and pretend that he's going to stand by them. But as we'll learn in a moment, he ain't stand by nobody. Their names are Eden Alexander, who is 19 years old. By the way. Um, once again, I was right, but too early when I said Israel absolutely and defenders of Israel absolutely in the Western world, especially is using these hostages as a fucking reason as to why they will enact righteous cruelty upon the entirety of the Palestinian population as simply a talking point. There is no better example than this because Biden refusing to give 2000 pound bombs to Israel unironically is better for the betterment of the hostages like him being like dude we're not giving you bunker busters because you're literally wiping out the entire gaza strip including with the hostages inside of the gaza strip we have to put an end to this somehow is unironically a decent way to try and stop israel from killing more hostages ben on the other hand is claiming that this is done against uh, the hostage's best interest. With respect to the Holocaust, yeah, in general, he's referring to how it took too long to intervene and also that they refused to take refugees. With respect to the 48 war, aside from Czechoslovakia, there really wasn't much external uh, support as far as I know. In those first years, Israel's diplomatic relations were difficult because the Arab League boycott, which made many countries, Germany, for instance, reluctant to normalize relations. Czechoslovakia is where they got the fucking uh, illegal weapons from, right? That that they were able to that they were able to to get all the guns that they could use against the Arab villagers. And was it South Africa as well? But I think it was definitely Czechoslovakia. Years old, Omer Nutra, who is 22, Hirsch Goldberg Poland, who is 23, Sagi Dekel Chen, who is 35, and Keith Siegel, who is 64. They are currently being held, and Joe Biden does not give two good dams about any of those people. On a moral level, Joe Biden attempting to preserve Hamas in Rafa is sick. On a political level, it is political malpractice. The American people do not like Hamas. The American people do not like this conflict, but they like Hamas even less than they like this conflict. They would like to see Israel finish this. The American people are tired of watching this war go on, wherein Israel is supposed to take it super slow. It never ends. What America likes are wars that are short. America's that are, America likes wars that are victorious. And those are things Joe Biden has never been involved in. And when it comes to the pragmatic, what Joe Biden is doing right now is the least pragmatic thing I've ever seen a politician do on foreign policy. He has created an entire incentive structure for Hamas to walk away from the table. He has created an incentive structure for Hezbollah to get into a war with Israel. He has created an incentive structure whereby, by the way, if Israel goes in, more civilians will die. So what am I talking about here? Yesterday, in what had been a telegraphed move for the last week or so, Joe Biden went on Aaron Burnett's show on CNN, and he proceeded to announce that the United States would remove offensive weaponry from Israel. Remember, he just signed a bill. Provide Dude, it's crazy. I'm listening to this, and the only thing I can hear, like, I'm, I'm listening to this screeching as this man-man, right? And literally the only fucking thing, the only thing I can hear is this. Stinky shit take. Arms manufacturers love long wars. Yeah, that is true. 
It's just like, he's just like, why won't you give Israel all the weapons it needs, even though you have been doing so for months? Why? Give Israel all the guns. I love Israel so much. Give him all the guns. 14 billion dollars in aid to Israel. That bill combined 14 billion dollars in aid to Israel and some 60 billion dollars in aid to Ukraine. And the way that Biden got it over the finish line along with Speaker Johnson in the House was by combining those elements. Because it turns out that the Republicans are disproportionately anti-Ukraine aid, but pro-Israel aid. And Democrats are disproportionately anti-Israel aid, but pro-Ukraine aid. Joe Biden has decided unilaterally that in violation of the Impoundment Control Act of 1974, he is simply going to hold up the shipments of weaponry. Every single lethal aid package that has gone into Israel is in direct violation of America's own rules and restrictions that they've set forward that dictate um, under the Leahy Act that no weapons transfers being made to a foreign nation, a foreign ally, can be used in committing international human rights abuses you cannot do war crimes with american weapons now of course all of our allies commit war crimes with our weapons all the time that's a joke but the idea that uh joe biden has no legal basis the idea that joe biden joe biden has no legal basis whatsoever to restrict weapons transfers to israel is ridiculous there is also subsequently an investigation that America put a timeline on on their own for Israel to deliver information on what they were doing with the American weapons. We literally told them yesterday was the deadline, by the way, for this, that by yesterday, Israel has to give a full report on how, the, how every single weapon has been used to ensure that no war crimes have been committed. We have now delayed the release of this investigation part of the reason why we i suspect the re delayed the release of this investigation is because it puts into legal doctrine or it puts into legally enforceable contracts directly directly our culpability in israel's violations of human rights Just letting you know that there is more to this conversation than what Ben Shapiro is crying about. To Israel over disagreements with how Israel is prosecuting the war. Now, by the way, he has yet to articulate exactly what Israel could be doing better or how. But none of that matters because we'll get to his real agenda in just a few minutes. We'll get to more on this in a moment. First, once again, the United States won't resupply Israel then and kill terrorists. It's a thing today, thing today. Trusting Pure Talk with my own phone calls for years. You should do the same. PureTalk.com slash Shapiro today. Again, that's PureTalk.com slash Shapiro. So Joe Biden goes on Aaron Burnett and he proceeds to say that he is going to deny Israel offensive weaponry if Israel goes into the quote unquote populated areas of Czechoslovakia sold Israel some aircraft like Spitzfires and a fuck ton of Mauser P-18s, MG machine guns, and other shit. Zionist forces used to spray at Palestinian villages in the Nakba. There was a UN embargo at the time, so all this had to be snuck in secretly. Yeah, it was Czechoslovakian guns that were used on the Palestinian villages. Of Rafa. Now, understand, Israel has been attempting to move the civilians out of Rafa so that they can go in and kill terrorists in Rafa. And populated. Joe Biden has opposed that too. So the new math is that the United States will undercut our own democratic allies if terrorists do the most terrorist thing, which is hide behind civilians. He is now creating a full-scale incentive structure for terrorists to hide among civilians because now they are safe from any sort of retaliation. The weapons that he wants to deny to Israel are targeted weapons. The kinds of weapons that minimize... Big dog, the reason why the terrorists are always safe, no matter where they are in the Gaza Strip, is because they're not children. They're not women and they're not children. If you look at the actual numbers, that's what the majority of the fucking deaths are. The overwhelming majority, as a matter of fact, two thirds. So the quote unquote terrorists, they're fine. They're fine because Israel doesn't have the smoke 
for actual militants. Israel only has the smoke for babies, for baby murder, which you love, supposedly, it seems. You claim to be anti-abortion, and you claim that abortion is baby genocide, and yet you are in support of the greatest facilitator of baby murder that we have seen. The greatest state-sponsored baby murder. You are demanding that the American government continue giving baby murder weapons to Israel, the number one baby killer on the planet currently. They are so good at baby killing. Civilian casualties, which will force Israel to use non-targeted weapons, which means more civilian casualties. He is showing daylight between Israel and the United States sufficient that Hezbollah might think, okay, well, if we open up on the Northern Front, the United States won't resupply Israel then either. Iran will get more aggressive, not less aggressive. And of course, Hamas will walk away from the table, which apparently they did this morning. They were supposedly negotiating in Cairo. And then upon- The reason why they walked away from the table is because Israel, contrary to what the American envoys offered to the Hamas side, contrary to what the CIA said to Hamas, in an effort to get them to agree to a ceasefire negotiation, Israel is moving against America's wishes. This is part of the reason why Joe Biden is saying that he would stop the weapons transfers anyway. All of which, by the way, makes it way harder to extract hostages. But Ben, as we've established, doesn't give a fuck. If it meant continuing the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians, Ben would kill those American Jews himself. Give him a gun, and he would shoot them point blank if it meant complete destruction of the Gaza Strip. I promise you, he does not give a fuck about those hostages. Because if he did, he would be joining in unison the rest of the Jews in Israel that are currently protesting the Netanyahu war cabinet for doing nothing. But because he simply talks about the hostages as a talking point and he hits the say their names bullshit as though he gives a single shred of a fuck. I'm telling you, if given the option where Ben was like, you get to kill as many Palestinian, as many Palestinian children as possible, but first you have to shoot through the five American Jews that are uh, held hostage by Hamas. He would shoot through them. He wouldn't even think about it. I thought they all supported the flattening of Gaza and Israel. They a lot of a lot of Israelis do support the flattening of Gaza, except they are also understandably very angry at the government because they want a fucking ceasefire so they can actually release the hostages. They're like, bro, you can keep flattening Gaza after you get the fucking hostages out. But in that time frame, in that time frame, the irony is that more people have started also saying, like with Omdim Be'echad, which we showed earlier today, a lot more people have started saying, you know what, actually, we shouldn't keep doing this war, as a matter of fact. Like, their numbers are growing, too. So as time continues, the appetite for flattening Gaza is also changing as well. Another dangerous prospect for Benjamin Netanyahu, which is causing him to behave in this incredibly irrational manner right now. <laughs> On hearing Joe Biden's words, they simply walked away clean, knowing that Joe Biden is now playing defense for Hamas. Make no mistake, Joe Biden has sided with Hamas in this conflict. There's only one predictable result of this, and that is the maintenance of Hamas as a political power and a military force in Gaza. Yeah, dude, Joe Biden loves Hamas. President Biden is actually Hamas. Yeah, that's right. I agree. Israel, do you hear that? I heard there are Hamas terror tunnels under the White House. Israel! I'm Israel! Hi! Do it! Do what must be done, Israel! Joe Biden is Hamas! 
Liberitas Israel! There are four brigades of Hamas, about 8,000 Hamas soldiers who are still in Rafah. Joe Biden is keeping them alive. Joe Biden is ensuring that they will walk out of the tunnels, heads held high at some point, and declare victory. And by the way, release no hostages in the process. Here is Joe Biden, a true moral coward, yesterday on CNN. I want to ask you about something happening as we sit here and speak, and that, of course, is uh, Israel is striking Rafa. I know that you have paused, Mr. President, shipments of 2,000 pound U.S. bombs to Israel due to concern that they could be used in any offensive on Rafa. Have those bombs, those powerful 2,000 pound bombs, been used to kill civilians in Gaza? Civilians have been killed in Gaza as a consequence of those bombs and other ways in which they go after population centers. And I made it clear that if they go into Rafah, they haven't gone into Rafah yet. If they go into Rafah, I'm not supplying the weapons that have been used historically to deal with Rafah, to deal with the cities, to deal with that for a second. problem. Civilians uh. in populated areas, or in Israel attacks populated Israel. Israel is not attacking populated areas. Israel is actively attempting to move populations from these areas so they can kill terrorists. So Joe Biden is <laughs> dude, dude, manifest destiny. Trail of Terrors was simply the American government moving Indians from one populated area to another. Yes, a lot of them died in the process, but, you know, that's collateral damage. The Americans were simply trying to destroy the terrorist Native Americans. ICC right now? Dude, are you kidding me? In a just world, he would literally be treated like Goebbels, okay? Oh, my God. In a just world, Ben would be declared a genocide heir and would go to jail and possibly shot and killed for his actions and facilitation of genocide. But we do not live in a just world. We don't. Dude, you're so thin. You didn't even tag me. You tagged Hassan Izabai. I thought it was Marsh holding up Kai and I couldn't understand where he got the strength from. Just move. Hey, Palestinians, if you don't want to be murdered by uh, American weapons, just move. He's just lying here, but he's lying, as we'll see, for a political purpose. Also, once again, he is an absolute coward. He is a vile moral coward, Joe Biden. This is true in Afghanistan. And in yeah, the Ottomans were just transferring around Armenians to fight terrorists is unironically the Turkish government's official position on the Armenian genocide. Literally. It's considered forcible population transfer of Armenians from the areas that they used to live in to Syria. Ironic because that's also the official Israeli position as well, alongside the Turkish government's position on the Armenian genocide. I wonder why Israel doesn't recognize the Armenian genocide. Hmm. It is true now. Here is Joe Biden. He said, deal with that problem. We're going to continue to make sure Israel is secure in terms of Iron Dome and their ability to respond to attacks that like came out of you. The, uh, in, uh, out of the Middle East recently, but it's, uh, it's, it's just wrong. We're not going to, we're not going to supply the weapons and the artillery shells used that have been used. Artillery in shells as well. Yeah. Artillery shells. So just to understand what they're doing right now in Rafa, is that not going into Rafa as, as you don't no, they, have, they, have, they haven't gone into the population centers, What they did is right on the border. And it's causing problems with right now in terms of with Egypt, which I've worked very hard to make sure we have a relationship and help. But uh, I've made it clear to Bibi and the War Cabinet, they're not going to get our support if, in fact, they go into these population centers. So they're not going to give their support if they go into the population centers, which is why Hamas is hiding in population centers. That is the entire reason they are doing it. So he is now engaging. Let's be clear about this. In a war between a genocidal terrorist group that murdered 1,200 Jews. Yeah, 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 Hamas is the genocidal entity here, not Israel. They murdered 1,200 Jews, okay? None of them were enemy combatants, of course. They were all civilian enemy combatants. 
every single one of them. 800 of them were civilians, 400 of them were IDF soldiers, but those were IDF soldier civilians, okay? Um, they also beheaded imaginary babies, 40 of them. They also threw imaginary babies in ovens. They also, with military directive from Hamas leadership, engaged in mass rape. He's just hallucinating all these things, okay? While simultaneously, the, the counter is like, okay, Hamas killed 800 civilians, 400 military, uh, okay. Atrocities on October 7. Israel has done like 40 October 7 since then. If October 7 is genocidal, you got to find a new word for what Israel's level of genocidal is. What is Israel doing then? It's great. Israel's doing something worse than genocide, if that's the case and others and took 250 hostages and is currently holding 133 hostages most of them surely are corpses by now but that includes some life yeah how they die how they die how they die our weapons that israel deployed on the palestinian civilian population that's how they died we killed them asshole of hostages joe biden is taking